Hey everybody, we're back with another episode of ThreatWise TV. I'm your host, Jason Wright. And we've got some exciting news to talk to you today about next-gen firewall, very important security technology. We're continuing to innovate, and that's why we have recently been placed in the leader's quadrant of Gartner's Magic Quadrant for firewalls. And partially because of that is because of innovations like the ones we're gonna talk about today, which is multi-instance. And so to help me talk about that, I have brought in the very well-hatted, longtime friend, <laughs> Scott Bauer. Welcome back to the show, buddy. It's good seeing you again. How have you been? Doing good, doing good. You're looking good. So I, I wore the back. white hat today, not the black hat, so we're on the good side today. Oh, you're building up a whole inventory. What, uh, Nothing close to yours. I have two, right. black and white. That's it. I think last time I counted, I was a little over 35. So okay, you, you, you need support, but that's all right. need a hat budget. Yes. But we'll talk about that later. Let's talk about multi-instance. What is this that we're, that we're describing here? So... For the longest time, we've had a requirement for customers to have multiple logical firewalls in their environment. And we did extremely well with the ASA multi-context. We were one of the first ones out doing it. The competition kind of came in and kind of mimicked what we're doing. But we've been very successful in ASA and multi-context. The challenge you have with that is it's a shared fate environment. Yeah. So you could over-provision. Uh, you could have issues where one firewall could impact another. And the other piece of it, which is critical for, as you had said, our, our innovation into the future, all the features we had to write had to be multi-context aware mm -hmm. because it was all based on the same firewall. Right. But now with multi-instance and firepower threat defense, we've changed the game again. So we're, we're kind of upping our game. We've improved on an innovation, mm -hmm. innovated on an innovation. Uh, so we've gone from multi-context from ASAs to now we're supporting which hardware platforms is this running on? So it, it runs on the 4100 and the 9300s. Gotcha. So it's the bigger chassis that we have. It's not yet right now on the 2100 and lower. So it's right. just on the bigger chassis. But if I understand this correctly, carving out the functionality and the hardware resources to provide multiple individual instances mm -hmm. of firewalls. That sounds like a larger type of deployment. So I'm thinking large enterprise data center type of stuff. Well, that, that is the sweet spot, but we can't forget the, the, the 4100, that price point could fit into our mid-sized customers okay. where they want to put a firewall at the top of a rack or in their data center, but they want to segment that out physically or logically as well. Okay. So we're talking about doing it logically, so carving out these, these hardware resources to create individual instances. And you talked about some of the problems that that solves with, uh, you know, the overriding the, the, uh, the resources mm -hmm. of the hardware device. It's, a, it's a shared environment. You could yeah. oversubscribe your firewalls. That could be problematic. And they could impact each other, correct. So we've solved that problem. Yes. Well, we're using Docker technology. Mm. So it, it's an industry standard, somewhat, Docker. Yeah. And we're using the Docker technology on our explicitly designed hardware for firewalling. Okay. And I know we've talked a lot about, you know, simplicity has got to be part of what we do with yeah. everything security. With everything we're doing. Complexity is the enemy of security, so we need things to be simple. Yeah. This sounds complex. It sounds like a, a dream within a dream <laughs> kind of stuff. Is this how, why don't you show it to us? Right. Let's, let's see so, what we're looking at. So it's, at it's very straightforward. So we're on right now, this is kind of the, the hardware abstraction uh, portal, right? Mm -hmm. So we're showing here a 4100. And we see we have up to eight ports. Only four are green right now, four are being used. There's other option slots, et cetera. But we're not going to get into that because this is not a uh, 4100 tutorial today. Sure. But we're going to use this 4100, and we're going to logically look at the different components from a hardware point of view. Okay. And then we're going to build a firewall right here on the show. Carve one out. All right. You ready? Right. Love it. Let's do All it. Right. So when you're looking at firewalls, what's the first thing we got to do? I'm going to secure two subnets, two networks, right? Set up so, the Gazinta and the Gazatas. The Gazintas and the Gazatas. Yeah, all right, we got that. So if I go into my logical device, I'm going to go in here, and I can see I already have one. So I did a little homework. I did create one ahead of time for us. But I'm going to go in here, and we're going to create a second one, just to show you how easy it is. So I'm going to go ahead. Let's kind of look at the first one. If I click on the expansion, I can see that this first firewall, FTD01, mm -hmm. has a management port and two Ethernet ports. And I can see on the right-hand side its IP address, et cetera. All right? So let's show you how easy it is to, to create. All right. So I'm going to click on Add New Device. So we're going to go in here and call it FTD-2 because I have no imagination. The other one is one. This one has to be two, it's right? It's very logical. Yeah, logical. yeah, I'm logical with anything else. All right. So Cisco Firepower Threat Defense. Mm -hmm. This is the 6.3 feature that we have now the version of software, as well as, do I want to make it a container, mm. right? I want to make a virtual firewall, So right? that, that's saying, hey, I want to carve out I a specific carve out amount resources. of resources for just this instance. You got it. Okay, Correct. cool. All right, click on OK. It wasn't too hard so far. So far. So that's going to start our workspace. We're going to make a firewall. That's what we just told it to do. 
So here's a firewall icon in the middle. And the first thing we said is we need to actually have configuration, right? We have to, add to actually add the Ethernet port. So I'm going to go in here, and I'm going to click on Ethernet 1. So you can see Ethernet 1 was attached to this. Oh, That's the physical Ethernet port on that screen we had earlier. Okay. And then I can go in here, expand, and this is a shared port. See the kind of the triangle, the, I don't know, I always mess up with my kids. Is that a greater than or less than sign? <laughs> I'm not a math guy. But that, that pointer right there is telling me that's a shared interface. Right. So what we're trying to do here is we're actually creating two firewalls pointing to the same ISP. So that's going to be one Ethernet port physically, but logically two links. Okay. And that's why it's shared. Okay, so okay. it's like using VLANs or specific IP addresses to be able to route the traffic to the right instance. But the difference between VLANs and this is we have physical separation here. Sure. This is this is two totally different data paths, everything. Gotcha. Okay, so now that we have the Ethernet ports, let's go into the actual firepower threat defense. So the first thing that we see here at the top is we have to assign a resource profile. Mm -hmm. Now, I've created these before. It's about five mouse clicks, but I didn't think we had to do it here today. Sure, sure. And you can see on the right-hand side, I have 12 cores available to me. Mm -hmm. Those are 12 physical cores that are sitting on that 4100 CPUs. waiting to be used. Yeah, CPU, okay. C CPUs, if you want to say that. Gotcha. So I can go in here and click on small. Now the management interface, right? I'm going to use Ethernet 1.1. You notice on the right-hand or left-hand side here, my left and right, really good at that, <laughs> they don't see 1.1 over here because 1.1 is dedicated to management. Right. So you're not going to use that for your data or, or anything for else. anything else, so it's right. management. So that's why I selected it there. And I'm gonna go in here, I'm gonna say 10.5.0.42, subnet mask, and the gateway. Pretty straightforward, right? Not so hard, not too hard. So this is the physical processor, that's small, that's a number yep. of cores. That, and that's a profile Ethernet. that you've that you've assigned that says how many, how much of the resources you're gonna devote to this particular instance, but customers, I assume have the ability to adjust this up and down if they need to? So there's two important things there. The first thing is the size of the number of CPUs is going to dictate the rest of the hardware. So I don't need to worry about assigning memory and all the rest of the stuff we have to do with virtualization. Everything else kind of flows it down flows through. once so, you assign So the CPU gating factor is the number of cores. Right. So if we say the cores, everything else flows through. Also, we'll have sizing. So our customers can say, I have X number of users or flow, depending on how you want to look at it, and this is the size of the processor complex I need to define. Okay. So we'll have guidance for that, but we can actually change this later if you want. Okay, excellent. Okay. So adjustable. It's adjustable. So I'm going to go into my settings. Now at this point, this is the same type of thing you would do for a physical firewall, like a 2110, right? The thing you have to do is you give it an IP address, and then to manage it from FMC, you have to fill in this quick screen, which is the registration keys, et cetera. So this is just a bunch of typing right now. All the now. normal administrative setup requirements. That you would do with any firewall to put it into a firepower management center. To get it up and running. Yep. Okay. So basically what we have right now is I've given the registration key, I've given its password, I've given it the, the, the firepower management center IP address, et cetera. Now again, if you're used to dealing with Cisco's firewalls and FMC, this is just straightforward. Yeah, this is no what they normally do to stand exactly. up a device. So just going to click on OK. So we've given it the Firepower version of software, 6305. Mm -hmm. I have two Ethernet ports. And I'm going to go up here and click Save. And we just created a firewall. It was pretty straightforward. Yeah, just created the firewall. It was very simple. And now we've got the kind of stability that, that keeps the you know, resources from taking over each other or sinking the whole ship by having one go out of, out of control, right? Exactly. And the key thing is I can run different operating systems. Right? Very cool. So you saw in there, I picked uh, the, the 6.3 release, but I could pick a 6.4 or whatever when they come out. Different iterations. Okay, yep. excellent. So right now it's installing and churning in the background, so it's not too exciting right now. But now that we have it all set up, I'm going to flip back over to FTD1 because that's already up and running. And then we're going to go over to Firepower Management Center, and there's FTD1. It's ready to go. Do you know that's a multi-instance? Can't tell from looking you at it care, here. You don't care, do you? No. Again, as we said earlier, if I give you the, the Ethernet ports you want, I give you the processing power you need, and the, the functionality from a firewall point of view, do you really care? And the answer is no. And Don't you care should. about you know, uh, how much memory do we have or what's the CPU clock cycles. Exactly. Just what's the performance. Yep. And we can control that by setting the, the cores assigned to it that exactly. you mentioned earlier. All right, very cool. So if I click on Edit, all right, there's Ethernet 1, Ethernet 2, and the sub-interface. Right. Pretty straightforward. Very. Now, that was pretty simple, wasn't it? Very. How about if I make it even easier? So, uh, yeah, I'm thinking, like, that was pretty quick, but what if we need to do this, like, a thousand times? Exactly, right? 
So this is all fully scriptable. Now, we're not gonna go into Python 101. This is, this is for the coders, it's not the faint of art, but it's- That's my line. It, there's a line here for this discussion, <laughs> correct. So, but with, with Python or scripting, we actually can, using, using the open APIs that we provide, this can all be onboarded on FXOS, which is the chassis manager, mm -hmm. and then actually imported into FMC, all so, automated. So we can script up the dissemination of, of these across hundreds exactly. or thousands of instances. Exactly. All right, so I'm hearing uh, a lot of great things about it for sure. All right, so here's the scripting part of it, right? So as you can see here, now this is a little bit sped up, but this is basically a script that's actually gonna take the hardware components that we said that we had, we're gonna install them or instantiate them within FXOS, we have the firewall, and then add them to FMC, all scripted. All scripted, so all automated and running in the background, and it takes a few minutes, but it's all doing that on its own. Yep. All right, so we've, I've seen the simplicity of it. It was very simple and, mm -hmm. and quick. We've done it a couple of times now yep. in a couple of different ways, just in, on our show here. Uh, very stable, like we said, so it's not uh, allowing one firewall that may go awry to pull down the whole so device. So we're saying stability is we have yeah. separate data planes, separate management planes, separation of everything. Everything is carved out and isolated. So one cannot impact the other. That's why we use the word instance. Correct. And then, uh, and then this is kind of the automation that's coming along with it here in the scripting. And I, does this run with uh, third party tools as well? Yeah. So any provisioning tool that like an MSP would use that has a scripting back end, which pretty much all of them do, they can script this and, and integrate it with their provisioning system. Awesome, man. That was a fantastic demo. Thanks so much for coming oh, by for and showing it to show. us. Great new features. So if you want to learn a little bit more about the 6.3 operating system and the support for multi-instance in Firepower, you can check out a little bit more at cisco.com slash go slash NGFW for next generation firewall. So I've been Jason Wright. Thanks for tuning in to this edition of ThreatWise TV.